by way of introduction, I'm going to welcome you to Physicians Regional Hospital here in Naples, Florida. My name is Robert Zare. I'm an orthopedic surgeon. I've been here in Naples now for 12 years. I was part of the Cleveland Clinic when I first came down here. The last three years I've been in private practice and I primarily focus on dealing with hip and knee replacements. Okay, we're going to start summarizing here a little bit, but the, the point I made at the first half of the talk is a little schizophrenic to this statement, why do patients wait so long? Previously I said, keep your own parts as long as you can, and now I'm saying, well, why are you waiting so long? So that schizophrenia is explained quite readily in that most people are afraid of surgery. They don't understand surgeons. All they know about surgery is what they see on Gray's Anatomy. And it's very hard for them to understand pain, knee problems, wound problems. They don't get any of that because none of that happens on TV. So they're afraid. They all are afraid of pain. Something's going to go wrong. It may take me all summer to get better. I'm all by myself. I don't have any friends. And everybody, everybody, everybody knows somebody that got screwed up. There's so few people get screwed up in joint replacements that everybody knows them. So there's always some horror story out there, even though there aren't really all that many things go wrong. These newer techniques seem to do better in that they have less pain, quicker recovery. The complication rate's a wash in my hands. I don't think that they, making bigger incisions certainly isn't beneficial. And if I don't have more problems, malrotated parts, something goes wrong, it, it's not worse by trying to be a little more uh, sophisticated in our techniques. And smaller incisions people tend to like. The bottom line is we want you back doing the things that you want to do as quickly as possible with as little pain as possible. Now who doesn't qualify for what we refer to as minimally invasive surgery? And I skipped the part that I want to refer to now. People don't quite understand minimally invasive. Now if you're a surgeon that used to make that big of an incision and now you're making it that big of an incision, in your surgeon's mind, hey, I'm a minimally invasive guy. I went down two inches from 12 inches. Well, I don't think most of us would buy that concept, but that qualifies as the surgeon saying, yep, I'm a minimally invasive guy. And you wake up and go, holy cow, I got a really big incision. I know, but I used to make it 10 inches last year and now I'm down to eight. So, why I make that point is, it's like picking ugly in a bar. Everybody's idea what that is is different. And so you've got to be pretty careful in defining what minimally invasive is. What does that mean to the surgeon? Because small incision does not necessarily constitute minimally invasive. And so I hope that some of these slides have helped you define that for yourself a little better. I don't have any real criterion for somebody that I won't do. If you look like that sumo wrestler, I'm just going to tell you to go someplace else because I can't lift you up. I got to at least be able to lift you onto the table and if you're that big, I'm just not going to kill myself. So anybody less big than that doesn't qualify to me as obese. It might qualify as we talked about BMI, but in general, uh, I do these small incision kind of techniques on everybody. If you've had surgery before or you've got a leg crooked as a dog's hind leg, I'm not going to try to do these heroically small incisions. I have to see what I'm doing. If the anatomy is the same anatomy God gave you at birth, it's going to be just like everybody else's. I can make small incisions. I can go in with great knowledge that yours is going to be like everybody else's. When we're doing revisions and I'm not the guy who did the first case, I usually got to make as big an incision as that guy did. We try to make them small, but I can't go in not knowing what the other fella did and try to sort it out through a teeny little hole. Now, those having been said, those are the only people that I won't try to do very small incisions on. The other point I need to make is that this is not me doing something to you. You have to appreciate that you're a very active and necessary part of getting better. You can't just throw up your hands and say, Doc, do whatever you want and stick your head in the sand. That is not going to fly with me. And if I get any sense that somebody's doing that to me, I just wish them well and plenty of other guys in town will take care of you, but it won't be me because I help you get better. If you don't want to do your part, which is generally therapy, all you're going to do is have a bad outcome and you're not going to blame your grandkids. You're not going to blame anybody but me. And so I want you to do well, but if you don't want to do well yourself, then we aren't going to get along very well. 
I set these expectations that I presented to you very clearly ahead of time. I don't have to operate on everybody that comes in. I operate on people that want to get better and that I think I can make better. Just because you show up doesn't mean I got to operate on you, believe me. So if you want to come in, I'm happy to help you get better. Surprises irritate patients, they irritate me. I let you know what's coming. I rarely let anybody have a surprise. We are very predictable. The nurses get bored with me because I do everything the same over and over again. So is minimally invasive surgery a blessing or a curse? Not every surgeon's gonna go down this pathway. As I mentioned, very few surgeons do a lot of joints. And if you don't do a lot of joints, you aren't gonna be able to do some of these very sophisticated techniques. The other thing that's a little bit of the seedy underbelly of medicine is that you don't get paid a nickel more for being a hero and doing sophisticated surgery. Your reputation may spread a little quicker and you get volume that way, but there's no extra for doing something so you can go a lot faster through a big incision. And that's why lots of guys will say, oh, I don't do minimally invasive, you can screw up something. Well, that's a really poor way to approach this. The, I can cut 15 minutes off of every case by making a big incision is an absolute fact. If you're on the receiving end, that doesn't make too much sense to you, but since you're not paying the bill, you don't have a lot of say so in that unless you're getting a guy that's got a pretty honorable background. And I assure you that there's plenty of guys out there that'll just make big incisions on you and you can look down at your own knee and decide for yourself if that isn't the case. So understand that lots of guys are kind of motivated by different uh, virtues in life and you're not getting reimbursed more by being heroic. Help or hype, a lot of the market's driving, hopefully that seminars like this make you smarter, you go ask for things, and when you come into the surgeon, you've got lots of information, you prefer smaller incisions, all these techniques, so if you come into manning it, you're gonna end up finding the surgeon's either gonna have to go learn how to do it or find a guy that does do these things. We've been through minimally invasive hips, coming in from the back, now I come in on the front on everybody, uh, we've talked about small incision, minimally invasive knee replacements, and we've talked last but not least about minimally invasive unicompartmental or uni knee replacements. So all of these techniques are designed to be less painful, quicker rehab, certainly more accurate with some of these newer techniques, but you've got to be a little bit more skilled and experienced than a guy doing one or two a month. You need to be the one pushing. The surgeons lots of times are going to be unable or unwilling unless you come in armed with this information and ready to challenge the guy. So are you a candidate? I'll leave that up to you to decide. But in final uh, conclusion here, I want to point out that we want you up doing the things you like. You gotta be up moving and dancing and getting around. And if those are your goals, those are my goals. So ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our talk for the evening. I really appreciate your time. Hope that was helpful.